Deepcool's reputation with air cooling is superb and the variety of differing products for differing markets, segments that the company offers is impressive. In today's review, we're examining the Deepcool AK500. This is a fat single tower cooler that comes equipped with a 120mm PWM fan. Coming in at around £50 street price in the UK, let's take a closer look at the Deepcool AK500. When it comes to accessories, we get the usual set of Intel and AMD installation hardware. This is in addition to a small tube of thermal paste as well as four fan clips to allow for push-pull upgradability. Deepcool also includes a low noise adapter cable that reduces top speed by 300 RPM if that's an approach you prefer versus motherboard speed control. Deepcool uses a thicker than usual 120mm class heatsink for the AK500 and as a note, the version that we got sampled with is the standard aluminium colour scheme with a black fan, but if you prefer you can go for an all white or an all black option, they do cost a little bit more money though. The reason we call this a thicker 120mm class heatsink is because that's exactly what it is. The AK400 from Deepcool is 45mm thick for the thin array, which is about normal, but this AK500 is double that at 90mm thick for the thin array. Given this thickness, Deepcool offsets the angle of the 5 6mm nickel plated copper heat pipes to allow for RAM clearance. Though do be aware for potential VRM heatsink interference headaches if you've got a really high end motherboard with lofty heatsinks on that area. Those 5 heat pipes feed into a nickel plated copper contact base. This is a different, more premium approach than the heat pipe direct touch design used on cheaper coolers such as the AK400 and it should pay dividends on CPUs with large area heat spreaders such as Ryzen. Deepcool deploys its 120mm FK120 PWM fan for use with the AK500. This fluid dynamic bearing fan operates at a speed range of 500 to 1850 RPM using a 4-pin PWM connector. To be honest, 500 RPM on the low side is not particularly good for a £50 CPU cooler. Personally, I would have expected better here and I would have wanted better here as we see from some of the competing brands such as Arctic which can go for a lower RPM on the low side. And interestingly, even that included low noise adapter or low speed if you prefer adapter cable, that actually only reduces the top end speed by 300 RPM, so down to 1550 RPM. According to the specifications, it doesn't change the low end speed. so. That's a bit of an odd one. With regards to RGB lighting, there is none on the fan, which I know will be appealing to many in our audience. Deepcool does, however, use an all black design approach, apart from the company's turquoise or teal logo. So this is a good looking fan in my opinion. And continuing with the fan, it actually mounts to the heatsink with pre-applied rubber dampers. That's a good quality touch for noise control in my opinion. Warranty for the AK500 is three years, which is fine, but it's hardly inspiring or market leading by any stretch of the imagination. When we're talking about a 50 pound or 55 pound CPU cooler, this is the price point where we're getting close to Noctua territory. And if you're coming along with a three year warranty versus Noctua's build quality, outstanding warranty, and some other competitors like Arctic, for example, then yeah, you're not looking all that great. Then again, we are talking about a block of metal and a fan. What can really go wrong? So let me know in the comment section down below what you think on the warranty front. And as I've already mentioned a few times, pricing of the Deepcool AK500 at the time of writing this script and shooting the video is about £50 on scan in the UK. AM4 installation of the AK500 was simple and quick because Deepcool uses the default AMD backplate. I put the stud posts in place and then mounted the brackets on top of them. The plastic top cover has to be removed from the heatsink and it can then be screwed onto the mounting brackets, the heatsink that is. And thankfully Deepcool includes a long screwdriver for this task. And then the 120mm fan is clipped onto the heatsink and connected. And of course you have to reapply that top plastic cover. The mount is quick, easy and solid. We had no issues with RAM interference as Deepcool's design intends. Though it is easy to see how tall VRM heatsinks could cause problems. But that's probably an unlikely situation for the market audience of this cooler. For testing the Deepcool AK500, it is going on our usual AM4 test system. This has been our go-to for a while and we have plenty of comparison data. This is built around the Ryzen 9 5950X, which we manually overclock with 1.3 volts and we run in precision boost overdrive mode, so well over 200 watts of package power pushed through the rear. The motherboard is a Gigabyte B550 Aorus Master with its excellent VRM solution. Clean juice comes from a Seasonic TX1000 1kW power supply. 
We've got the Gigabyte RTX 2060 Super graphics card in zero dB mode. And the case is a fractal design Meshify 2 chassis with four 140 millimeter fans. For testing, we use a 30 minute looped run of Cinebench R23 NT and we record the steady state CPU temperature towards the end of that 30 minute run. Our ambient temperature is kept around about 22 to 24 or 25 degrees Celsius and where it does vary outside of that range, we will add in additional test runs to ensure the validity of the data and of course we report in deltas. And as always, if you want more details on our test hardware, test procedure, our comparison points, then please do check out the written review on the main Kikuru webpage. That also supports us massively. Let's get into the results. Let's start off with noise performance at 100% fan speed. This is important for getting an indication of where our performance expectations should lie based on noise output. Running at 1850 RPM top speed, deep cool single 120 mm fluid dynamic bearing fan operated at 42 dBA in our test setup. That's practically the same noise output as the AK400, which uses the same fan. I would call this level of noise output mediocre for a cooler priced at £50 in the UK. It's perhaps a bit less than mediocre to be honest, but the cooling performance will give us a better indication of that point. Getting down to 40 dBA noise operation on the AK500 required reducing the fan speed to 85% of its PWM duty cycle. This was reported as 1650 RPM according to the UEFI reading. Interestingly, this was lower speed percentage than the AK400 that uses the same 120mm fan, so perhaps the way in which the airflow interacts with the AK500's physically larger heatsink has an influence here. 85% fan speed hit 40 dBA is not particularly great for a premium air cooler, but we'll have to see how the performance stacks up. Performance from the Deepcool AK500 running at full fan speed on our overclocked Ryzen 9 5950X test system was positive. The £50 unit managed to offer up stellar performance for an air cooler that put it close to 240mm all-in-one liquid cooling levels of performance. In fact, this chunky boy from Deepcool is up there with the best air coolers that we've tested on our 200 plus watt Ryzen based system. 40 dBA noise lock performance on the AK500 is also excellent. Once again, we see this single tower air cooler offering up highly competitive performance versus even noise lock 240mm all-in-one liquid coolers. And the performance of Deepcool's higher end AS500 Plus is also matched by the AK500. Of course, Arctic's cheaper Freezer A35 ARGB is not far behind Deepcool's £50 unit, but as we saw from the unrestricted noise performance of the AK500, it has some more performance left in the tank if you ramp up the fan speed. Next up is the Precision Boost Overdrive set of results. Firstly, it is critical to note that small differences in the display delta temperature are not as important for our PBO testing because the clock speed and cooling power achieved are more important metrics. PBO numbers at full fan speed continue the trend that we've seen thus far. The Deepcool AK500 offers up strong cooling performance that makes it competitive against our other air coolers and some cheaper 240mm all-in-ones. Managing to cool 220 watts of AMD Ryzen 9 package power to allow a 4.37 GHz clock speed is promising. This is a little better than what the dual fan Deepcool AS500 Plus managed. VRM temperatures are unimpressive though. Here we see Deepcool's AK500 sitting at the bottom of our chart. The ability of that 120mm fan to disperse airflow around the VRM heatsink is clearly limited. So that's something to bear in mind when comparing against other air coolers. Cutting straight to the point with this one, there is a lot to like with the Deepcool AK500. This is a simplistic CPU cooler that offers stellar performance in its reasonably sized package. Noise performance with our 120mm FK120 fan run at full 1850 RPM is pretty mediocre as far as premium air coolers go in my opinion. And to add to that point, the fan speed control range is not particularly great either with a 500 RPM low limit. That's not ideal. Cooling performance however, that's good. It's very good. We saw this 50 pound air cooler offering up thermal numbers similar to budget 240 mm all-in-one liquid coolers on our Ryzen test system. And it did that whilst running with more tolerable noise output thanks to its omission of a pump. Versus other air coolers, the Deepcool AK500 also fares well. It offered up similar numbers to what we saw from Deepcool's own AS500 Plus. And this was a cooler that we reviewed previously and were very impressed by. On the installation front, that was quick and easy. And realistically, we're probably not going to see complaints with regards to RAM interference because of Deepcool's design adjustments. 
The warranty though, that is not something I would call impressive for a 50 pound CPU cooler. Three years seems a little slim in my opinion, though I guess there is the argument that not much can really go wrong with an air cooler because it's a block of metal and a fan. But when competitors such as Noctua and Arctic in kind of above and below and quite similar price ranges are offering much better warranties, that is something to bear in mind and is something that I think Deepcool could improve on. But as always, let me know what you think on that point in the comment section down below. Overall, the Deepcool AK500 is a good air cooler that offered up stellar performance in our test scenario. Full fan speed and 40 dBA noise locked cooling performance was strong, and the £50 price point seems to be fine with overall build quality that's good. So, as far as I'm concerned, this is a solid offering from Deepcool, and I like it. I've been Luke Hill for Kickeru. Thank you for watching this video review of the Deepcool AK500. Let us know what you think of this cooler in the comment section down below. Are you impressed by the price point? What do you think of these bigger, bulkier air coolers? Would you rather go AIO or are you happy with this? And what about that warranty? Is that something that concerns you? Let us know in the comment section down below. As always, if you like this video, do all the YouTube stuff, so like, subscribe, support the channel. Please do check out the written review on the main Kickeru webpage. That helps us out massively. Um, social media, Discord, Patreon, all that type of stuff. And until next time, that's me signing out.